This morning we're going to be uh, in the uh, the chapter uh, 10 of the Gospel of Luke, continuing to think about grounded faith. And uh, certainly the last few weeks have reminded us uh, of just how important it is to make sure we're depending on God, truly not just thinking about it in a religious and informal way, but as we're going to see today, that uh, it's just as important to make sure we're living out our faith uh, daily, daily taking up our cross as we uh, talked about uh, last week. But today, the topic that we're going to see in chapter 10 is the topic of uh, of, of service. I, I almost said ministry because uh, most often in the Bible, the, the word for service is just that. It's, it's ministry. And, and maybe uh, just like myself, you, you, you weren't aware of this, but the word ministry just means service. Generally, it just means service. We often associate it with the, the Bible, and we, we think about it uh, in terms of what we do uh, as, a, as a church and as, as Christians, and, and that certainly um, has a lot of value. Uh, but, but an example of this that uh, I learned, I think, first in, in college to kind of unpack what that means to do ministry and to do service is that uh, other governments internationally, mostly the, the, the British Empire, will use this for the title of the services that they uh, uh, provide. And here, I think, is a picture of uh, Singapore has the Ministry of Education, or uh, in, in Canada, they have the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, here in America, we just use the, the, the general term uh, departments, uh, the Department of, uh, of Labor, uh, as an example. But, but what that's meant uh, to help us consider is just that the word ministry, it, it just means generally service, but as, as Christians and as, 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 as church ministry, it's, it's all the more important to know that when we see this biblically and we see this play out in our own lives, Um, that we're called uh, to do service, ministry in the name of Jesus. That helps us to to know um, our our mission, uh, to to make disciples of all nations, telling them about the good news of Jesus, freedom from sin, as we're going to celebrate in a few weeks on Easter. So so the idea for for our purposes already, as we start thinking about uh, this this word service, is really, it's it's meant to help us understand that that's what it means by, by ministry in the Bible. But, but in our own lives, it's meant to tell us that we're doing so um, for the purposes of Jesus, to do it um, in the attitude of Jesus, as we're going to see here, um, recognizing uh, that those small things and large things that we do have an, an enormous impact on our world and on people's lives. But, but as we look at chapter 10 of the Gospel of Luke today, this lesson on service and ministry, wouldn't you know it, 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 it happens not in a, in a classroom. It doesn't happen um, out in, in public. Uh, that often happened. Even last week, we saw some miracles that Jesus would perform uh, in, in front of a, a large crowd. But today, what we're going to see is this lesson on ministry and service happens in someone's home. And so all week, I've been thinking about that and, and, and thinking about uh, not, not being able to, to meet in, in person. But, but, but what, a, what a fitting way to think about this idea of ministry and service as we um, continue to, to, to live out our lives and, 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 and live it uh, even in, in our home life. But, but, but if you're familiar with the Bible, th- this lesson that Jesus highlights in terms of service and, and ministry, it, it happens with two sisters, Mary and, and Martha. And, and again, if you're familiar uh, with the Bible, perhaps you've even studied this and taken some time uh, to look at this. But, but the idea is that, that what, a, what, a, what a fitting way to, to highlight um, the idea of getting along and working with others when it comes to siblings, because perhaps that's been your experience growing up when you think about if you've had a, a brother or sister or if you have kids at home. Um, oftentimes what we see is that there's a, a sibling rivalry. And in fact, uh, just off the top of my head, uh, there seems to be a lot of examples of this in uh, the sports world with the, the Harbaugh's both being uh, NFL coaches that uh, coach against each other um, uh, in, in different matches. Uh, you have the, the, the Williams sisters at, at tennis, and they, they, uh, they had a great competition there. And obviously, uh, Peyton and Eli Manning, both uh, NFL uh, quarterbacks. Uh, but the one up in the, in the top corner there I put on there, I, I came across it thinking about great sibling rivalries. But these are the, uh, the Kellogg's brothers. And I, and I came across them and, and thought, well, you know, I'm new to Michigan. And this uh, took place in Battle Creek, Michigan, as you may know. And in fact, you may even know their story better than I, but from what I was able to gather, uh, the two of them uh, used to work 
in, in the same uh, kind of field and in in in, uh, in in business together, and they they uh, would have bitter arguments. In fact, um, the the younger younger brother even finally uh, ended up quitting because he couldn't take it anymore. But but then the younger brother went on to, uh, from what I what I gathered, uh, went on to to create Kellogg's Corn Flakes, and, and he had a successful business, but it didn't end there. Uh, they they ended up suing each other because of uh, the rights of using. Uh, their name, and uh, and ultimately, uh, when when one of them uh, passed away, it was right after one of their b- bitter arguments, and the other brother, the Kellogg's brother, ended up regretting and saying uh, that he wished that the their course of their their relationship didn't turn out the way it had. We we see this also in the Bible, uh, many examples of uh, siblings that we can learn from and and consider in terms of in terms of getting along with one another. Uh, the very first. Uh, Brothers in the Bible, Cain and Abel, uh, certainly has a lot to speak in terms of the seriousness of, of, of making sure that we are, are living out uh, to care uh, for one another instead of um, letting jealousy uh, take over. Um, you have uh, uh, Jacob, Esau, who are uh, br- brothers that were uh, twins, in fact, uh, and they have uh, certainly a lot to, to, to share there as well. And then you have Joseph that comes to mind with his brothers in terms of getting along and what an amazing picture of, of forgiveness and recognizing God's hand uh, upon even those difficult relationships. But today, we're going to be looking at Mary, uh, Mary and Martha, two sisters that both, by the way, start off this, this situation by inviting Jesus into their home. What an amazing thing isn't it? To consider what it would mean to have Jesus be a part of our home. So it starts off right away with this opportunity to consider what it means to serve, what it means to do ministry, and Jesus has some great things to help us uh, in that. So why don't we turn together to um, the Gospel of Luke chapter 10, and we'll pick up in verse 38 to see what this can tell us about serving in our own lives. Verse 38, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had been made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So uh, the situation begins, as you see, and it's important there that the disciples are mentioned. Now, they're not discussed uh, the rest of uh, the story, but but they're meant to kind of be be, be in view because uh, perhaps this whole situation um, was 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 surrounded uh, and, and, and engaged with a, a meal preparation, either uh, getting it ready or or after in the case uh, of Martha. But it's but it's important, especially because perhaps if you've ever studied Mary and Martha, there's a tendency uh, to look at Mary and, and and paint her as just the the good daughter, or so the the good sister, and, and you know she's just spending time with Jesus, and there's certainly something. Uh, a value to to consider there, but but then the other tendency is just to look at Martha and, and just paint her as just the one who's who's just a little bit too out of control. She's the the sister that always had her her room exactly the way she wanted it, and and she uh, she called attention to her sister who was just being being lazy. Now now to help us in this, we're gonna kind of pause and look at each of the the people uh, identified one at a time to to slow down to help us think about service in our own life. So the first. First one we'll look at is, is is Mary because she's mentioned just at the beginning there as well and and, and indeed there's something worth uh, highlighting the idea that she is she's perfectly at peace she's sitting at the the feet of Jesus this is meant to tell us that she is um, sitting as a, as a disciple of Jesus we often think of the the twelve disciples but but here we're highlighted that that Mary was also sitting recognizing Jesus and his authority listening to his his words we don't know what they were talking about in fact. All throughout this scenario, Mario doesn't even say a word. And that's kind of the point. The idea is um, whatever she was go- going through in her life, whatever struggles that the world uh, may have had for her, at this moment, she's sitting, she's, she's calm, she's, she's at peace. She's finding a place of contentment through Jesus who's loving her, serving her, and building her up. So the first thing that we can consider when it comes to service in our own lives is to consider the service of Jesus. We need to find contentment by being served by Jesus. 
just like Mary right there. And, and again, maybe she was having a, a rough situation. Maybe she was talking to Jesus uh, about a, a difficult relationship in her life or sharing some of the struggles of what it meant to be a, a woman in, in this context and time period. But, but as we're going to see here, the idea is that she finds a place at the feet of Jesus, just like anyone who's, who's called and hears the, the voice of God and, in response to the grace of, of God through Jesus can find a place sitting to be loved, to grow, to be more like him. Now, all the illustrations today in this passage are gonna, gonna be food related. So hopefully that doesn't get us too tempted to think about uh, our, our next meal together, but it, it, it does seem to lend itself if you think about it because of the way the situation is set up, especially uh, coming up next with Martha, that perhaps this was all uh, about a food, uh, a meal that she was, she was preparing. But, but here for Mary, uh, uh, the, a way to illustrate this is to think about it um, in our own lives. If, if you've ever been to a restaurant and, and, and not a busy time of day, but again, it's not a, a, a perfectly you know, quiet place. It's just kind of at that right spot. You're sitting down to a meal and, and you're engaged in a great uh, conversation. And, and all along through the course of the meal, um, your, your water is always full. You don't even notice that the, the, the waiter is coming by and, and is, is adding more things to your, your table. You're not even worried about those things. Why? Everything is taken care of. Only till after the meal to realize your check is already there. In fact, somebody already took care of the check and you had no idea. As opposed to what sometimes can happen, and, and we all understand this, not to, 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 to exaggerate this too much, but we all know what it's like to be at a, at a restaurant at the wrong time when it is so busy that you know the poor waiter and waitresses are, are just trying to take care of everything. And, and you're in the middle of your conversation and you go to have some water and you realize, oh, my water's full. Oh, I'm really thirsty and I'm sorry I have to stop. And oh, no, this is the wrong time. We might have to adjust our our plans, or, or or maybe they forgot your meal. And again, the idea is all that just just um, uh, you know distracts and, and can kind of uh, help us to to get out of the, the moment. But not that's not happening there for Mary clearly. Or or the opposite. We know the opposite is true possibly too. You know, you have a great uh, a waiter or waitress who has great intentions, but they keep coming in and saying, "Oh, can I fill up your water?" Oh, actually, you have enough. Okay, I'll come back. Can you, you, you still need more? And you think to yourself, "No, I actually I'm fine." Or hey, can I take away? Uh, your meal and you're thinking to yourself, no, I, I just started eating. I'm not done yet. And, and what's the, the idea here? The, the idea is, again, for, for Mary, she's sitting down. And again, maybe she just settled in and she's not looking at her watch. She's perfectly at peace, finding the contentment, knowing that part of what it means uh, to, to grow in our faith is to sit and listen and be served by Jesus. That's a, a great way to think about service in our own lives, especially as we move forward in this, this passage, that we're called to spend time and listen to the very voice of Jesus. That's actually what we talked about last week, too, with the transfiguration. God's voice from heaven on the mountain even said, this is my son. Listen to him. And then the other two figures were, were gone, right? And then what happened was Jesus was left alone. All the more em emphasize his, his greatness and the importance of listening to the voice of Jesus. Uh, another way the Bible uh, describes what this means in terms of the importance of, of God's word and letting that to, uh, inform us is, is, the, is the word sanctification, if you've ever heard that. It just means sanctify or, or, or holy, because the idea is, is that through the words of, of God, through the very word of God, that, that ministers to our heart to help us to become more of who we are in Jesus, our true identity. Again, not to earn not to get, but the idea is that we're, we're called to enjoy God's presence according to his word. And this harkens back all the way to the Old Testament as well, because God's people, Israel, was, they were called to be a separate nation. And part of that was to identify that they were given the very laws of God. They were, they were given the very word uh, of God that the other nations uh, needed but did not, not, not receive the way that, that God's people had. And the idea was is they didn't live that out perfectly but it meant that they were supposed to rely on God and trust God. And ultimately, that meant that Jesus would come and live the law perfectly for us so that we can have this gift of his word in our life. In fact, Jesus even prays this for us in John chapter 17. He says this, um, picking up in uh, verse 13. He says, I'm coming to you now, uh, praying to God as Father, um, God the Father, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that you may have the full measure of my joy within them. I, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, 
even as I am not of it. And then verse 17, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And so as we think about the power of God's word in our life, and as we think about Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, again, she may have been pouring out her heart and, 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 and saying, I just, I'm just having struggle with, with loving my, my neighbors, Jesus. And Jesus may have even taken an opportunity to tell her, well, I have a, a great parable about that, about the Good Samaritan that we looked at a couple weeks ago that's also in chapter 7. Wow, that's a great way to think about loving others. So the idea is that by her growing, then, and, and as we're going to see here in a moment, she might be able to then go and, and apply that to uh, her life in the way that she serves and loves others. But it's important here to identify Listening to the voice of God, God's word is the primary way that we're able to uh, grow and, and be served and to be loved by God, to know more of what, it likes, what, what, it, what it's like to live, to be uh, like him. Because the idea is that we can't find this anywhere else. There's a lot of great advice and other things that we can learn in this world, but, but primarily we're meant to know that we can't find this anywhere else. And that's why it's important to, to find opportunities to gather together, to study, and, and to spend time like this as we join together uh, on Sundays to, to learn and listen to the voice of God, to speak into our lives. Because the idea is too, and what I've often thought about in my own life, is that uh, uh, the, the idea is sometimes I don't even realize it in the moment. Sometimes we'll read a passage like this and we'll just think, okay, that sounds sounds great, and, and, and it just kind of kind of sinks in, but but only to later. And I don't know if this has been your case, but I find myself uh, often times will, someone will be talking about a Bible verse or something will come up, a situation, and then only later to realize, wait a minute, I was just reading that not too long ago. We had a, 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 a sermon on that not too long ago. So in the moment, it may not have realized it, but spending time and, and taking time in preparation beforehand can then all the more pay off uh, later by God's grace and through uh, God's Holy Spirit to, to bring those things to mind and, and to help us to, to apply them as a great way to think about what it's like to sit at the feet of Jesus like Mary here. And again, the idea is whatever struggle she may have been facing, and I love this, I think there's a great point that, that everyone can find a spot at the feet of Jesus by God's grace, those who hear his voice and respond in faith. The idea here is that Mary uh, was, was, was finding an equal spot as a disciple of Jesus. And again, the, there may be ways to, to go off uh, too, too far in terms of the application, but the idea is that, it, that, uh, that, that each person that, that, that comes and, and, and responds uh, can sit and, and respond and find freedom and contentment. So whatever conflicts and injustices that we see in the world, we can find contentment if anyone who hears can sit uh, just like we've seen previously, all different kinds of people, haven't we, in the Gospel of Luke already. A, a centurion um, was able to meet with Jesus. Um, uh, we, we saw a widow who was in, in need. And then even last week, Jesus highlights a child to show that even the least um, uh, are, are greatest in, in, in God's kingdom, that God has a care for, for all um, in highlighting the need for service, which is what we're going to see next because because Mary's perfectly content. She's, she doesn't say a word. We don't know exactly what is going on there, but she is allowing Jesus to speak into her life and to be ministered to, to be served by Jesus, to help us understand the importance as well for the priority of, of God's word in our own life. And then next, we wouldn't have known this until Martha identifies it, but, but next, now it takes over and, and Martha tells us a little bit more uh, of what it means uh, to serve. So she, so she continue, continues on and again, we don't, we don't know exactly if she was preparing a meal, but maybe this was after a meal. But in the process of, of inviting Jesus into her home, which again is, is something very worthwhile to think about in our own lives as well. What a great thing Jesus has come to, to spend time with, with Mary and Martha. But now Martha, in that process, she may have wanted to do something special. She may have wanted to create a special meal for Jesus and for the disciples. But in that process... Uh, it goes on and on until finally she can't take it anymore. She realizes she's taken on a little bit too much. Now, now that in and of itself, again, is not a, a terrible thing. It's actually an appropriate thing. E even in our own lives, we, we know what that's like to, to realize we've taken on maybe a little bit too much. But it's, it's only afterward here, based on her response to see that she, uh, she let that um, to go, go to a place that it, it shouldn't have. But initially, when she caught that she was taking on too much. Um, she had a myriad of different ways that she could have uh, responded, right? I mean, think about it. She could have just paused right there. She could have gone in the other room. She could have just sat down 
next to Mary and Jesus and said, oh, guys, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think I took on a little bit too much. Can I just sit down and, and talk? What are you guys talking about? That would have been, that would have been fine. Or even before that, she's in the, in the kitchen and she starts to realize that she's taken on a little bit too much in the kitchen. She could have just, what, what I often do is talk out loud and go, oh, no, I think, I think I've gotten a little bit out of control. Um, uh, in, in fact, um, maybe that's been your experience. I remember when I first started learning uh, to cook and I, and I found a recipe and, and, and I go, okay, I think I can do this. But it's important to make sure you have everything in the right order, isn't it? So, so oftentimes, if you've ever experienced this yourself too, you'll, you'll, you'll follow the directions and go, okay, I'm going to put, the, the, you know, put this on a pot and, and turn that on. Okay, then I'm going to go over to the, the fridge and take out the milk. And now right now I left the fridge open and I'm starting to chop. And now the, the pot's boiling. Okay, now I look at the recipe and realize, oh, wait a minute. I don't even have that, that uh, ingredient. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Oh, now I have to, uh, okay, I have to preheat the oven? Uh, how long is that going to take? Oh, no. And by this time, people are starting to get hungry. You're getting hungry yourself. And then you go over and the pot's still boiling and you turn that off and that's ready. Now it's getting getting cold and you're trying to uh, put it over onto the, the stove. And then you realize, oh, no, now I have to, I was supposed to thaw out the meat. That's going to take a while. So I put that into the, the microwave and, and then, you, then you realize that at the end of the day, okay. And, and, w- and one of the first times I remember doing this, I was doing stir fry. So I go, get all that done. Okay, great. Now it's time to eat. Oh, wait. I need, need rice. How long does rice take? Rice takes 20 to 30 minutes. My goodness, that's why I, I missed my time in, in Korea with a rice cooker that does it uh, very simply or those bagged uh, uh, vegetables you can throw in the, the microwave are real time savers. At that point, though, we've all been tempted, especially when family starts to get hungry, when we just go, you know what, it would have been easier just to do takeout, to prepare the meal much sooner and more effectively and had a better better plan. Perhaps uh to apply this to our work life, if, if you have a project and you think to yourself, oh, I'm going to really get this done, and, and then we all know what that's like to, to take a simple project, and maybe even at home, right, you start adding more and more and more until you finally get to a point where the due date is coming up, and you realize, you know what, I don't think I can do everything that I thought I could set out to do, and it's almost easier sometimes to completely start over from the beginning, simpler even with a short amount of time, with some of the things that you've learned. Um, Maybe to uh, use another example, last week I talked about fishing, uh, so I'm trying to use other uh, examples that are relatable. I came across this one, I think, on social media, where it was a picture of somebody who had knitted something, and the the top part of the picture said, this is how it started out, and it was a, you know, uh, beautiful-looking sweater, but then the second bottom half, it said, this is how it ended up, and then it went on, and the bottom half of it was just very very wonky because the idea was somewhere in the process it just became more and more and so the person who had posted it said I'm gonna have to unravel the entire thing and start over because of taking on maybe a little bit too much an extra stitch here and there and that's the idea is that Martha here set, set out to say you know she invited Jesus in and she may have wanted to do something special thinking wow she can use her gift of, of cooking and, and hospitality uh, and yet in somewhere in the process she gets distracted. So for, for our own purposes, what does this mean? What, what it means is, is, is the, the point here is that serving God with daily tasks should not conflict with our spiritual lives. Serving God with our daily tasks should not conflict with our spiritual lives. And the idea here is, is maybe you've heard this before, but, but even early Christians, when they looked at this passage, they realized a dynamic going on. They looked at it at, 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 in Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, and they recognize our spiritual lives, that we're, we're called to, to be at home in heaven forever in eternity. And, and that's true about who we are in our, in our, in our new nature and, and, and who we're called to become in Christ. But then they look at, at, at Martha, and Martha represents our, our earthly and our daily tasks. And, and both of those things are, are true, but the idea is that uh, we're, we're not called to just think about heaven all the time. I mean, the, the New Testament calls that out. Paul even talks to the, the, uh, Thess- Thessalonica, uh, the, the Thessalonians. Uh, he tells them that, you know, if you're just waiting for Jesus to return, that's great. But we also have um, a calling now and a mission now to live out in our daily lives. And, and yet the idea here with, with Martha is that as we are serving, we can't get distracted. We need to make sure that we understand what we're doing, how we're doing it, and have the right motive through it, especially because we, we look through all the, 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 the New Testament. Certainly Jesus isn't saying to Martha, hey, stop, never serve, right? He wasn't telling Mary as she was sitting there, never serve. No, all throughout the New Testament, we understand that the, the value and importance of what it means to, to serve others, but to do it with the right motives and the right heart. 
And so as we think about Martha here, who, who got distracted when she caught that, instead of moving on to complain, instead of the, the, even attacking Jesus, as we're going to see um, in, in a moment, she had an opportunity to take a step back and maybe realize that she could go and, and sit at the feet of Jesus, but also recognize as we're serving to make sure we're not taking on too much, that we're not getting distracted and losing focus. Because perhaps even in our own lives, as we think about applying this, perhaps that's what has um, prevented others from serving when, when you've had people who have criticized or who have, who have uh, thrown it out, out of proportion or, or gotten frustrated or, or upset instead of knowing why we serve and, and the value of, of loving others as we, we serve. And, and it starts by that, to recognize that, that as we, we, we identify ways that we can serve, um, we can do so by making sure that we're eliminating unnecessary distractions. Um, in, in my own life, uh, some of the, the things that I have learned uh, that have been helpful, um, that, the first one that comes to mind is, is uh, the, the tech ministry. Uh, we are very blessed at Michigan Center Bible Church to have uh, some wonderful uh, people who, who serve and have served with, with tech using uh, their gift of, of running sound and, 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 and visual and, and the PowerPoint, and especially with, with, with COVID and, and going to online and streaming. Uh, we're so grateful for those who have, have served in that way. Uh, but whenever I've been trained and whenever I've uh, uh, learned how to do that, especially on Sunday morning, clicking the PowerPoint for the worship words, um, I... I I, I was blessed to, 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 to hear the, the heart behind that is the idea that when you're, when you're clicking, uh, the, the, the way to serve is to make sure that you're doing it at the right time and in the right way, not getting overwhelmed uh, as, as, as it can often uh, feel sometimes. And again, if that's not uh, your way of serving, um, that, that's fine. I think that the idea and principle can apply to, to other places as well. Same thing with worship ministering. I remember when I was first um, uh, getting involved uh, to use uh, uh, gifts of, of music to, to serve as we have others at Michigan Center Bible Church. Uh, uh, what a wonderful ministry, but the idea is I, I remember thinking early on that, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm thinking too much about the music and, and, I'm, and I'm getting maybe too little, little frustrated or, or am I not thinking too, too much about uh, why we're worshiping. And the idea is that all along that process, the way to serve is to, to just make sure that from start to finish that we're, we're, we're uh, putting our, our instruments and voices together to serve one another. And that's a form of, of worship to be able to have people who think about some of those things, even those that come and, and are involved in, in, in prayer, that come up to, to pray during our times of, of worship. Same thing, to come up and be ready and, and not to be distracted or, or think too much about you know, making mistakes or, or doing it uh, you know, the wrong way, to, to not allow that to be overwhelming. Why? To have people around us to make sure that we have uh, a support and, 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 a, and a place that invites those things to happen so that we can hopefully eliminate any some of the bad experiences that can happen when the focus gets put on the wrong things. So I hope that it encourages you as we, we think about Martha to think about even practical ways. And even in the case of Martha, another very simple practical way to kind of finish up a uh, focus on her there is, is the idea that she used uh, her gifts of hospitality. And we are so blessed at Michigan Center Bible Church to have others who have served in that way and, and continue to do so. Even this week, uh, we had a meal dropped off for us. What a simple way and a delicious way for those um, who, who, are, who have and, and are able to do that. So thank you so much for, for those who, who do that in, in formal and in, in, in organized and informal ways, knowing that there are plenty of other um, uh, moments and, and opportunities for service that, uh, that often happen. So, so this is just an opportunity to say thank you. And as we consider to think about that as a church, prayerfully to say, God, would you help us to continue to do that, to get people involved and recognize one another's gifts. And that certainly has been true in, in my own life. And that's something as a, a pastor that I prayerfully want to make sure continues to happen, that we're helping others, training others to grow and to use their gifts in a way that avoids some of those unnecessary, overwhelming, frustrated feelings. And then finally, Jesus does that perfectly, doesn't he? In the midst of all of this, in fact, before this, before Martha goes in and, 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 and gets after Jesus and, and blames her, her sister, before this, Jesus um, hadn't, hadn't said anything directly to Martha. But now, after Martha initiates this, and, and, and it certainly doesn't go the way that she maybe thought it was, she, she goes after Jesus thinking that he's going to side with her against her sister. But, but, but now, the, the amazing thing, if you think about it, now Jesus is there to speak with Martha to help her get an opportunity to grow just like Mary did. 
And Jesus' words are directed, and this is the whole point, directed to exactly what Martha needed to hear. And, and the idea uh, is that uh, as, as Martha identified her, her, her frustration, she comes in and, 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 and she, in this moment of kind of self-righteousness, she, she, she thinks the problem is, is uh, Mary. She even slightly uh, turns it on Jesus, starts off by saying, Lord, calling him Lord, and that's great. But Lord uh, simply elevates him as a, 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 in terms of his authority, in, in terms of a, a, the, the authority of his words and him as a teacher. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, certainly recognizing him as Lord. Martha attempted to with what, what she called him, but the idea here is, is that, that maybe she wasn't fully getting what that meant, that Jesus has the authority to speak into our lives. And this is the beautiful thing. Even in the middle of that, where, where uh, Martha kind of uh, uh, talks about her own self two, three times in there, the idea is that, that she's frustrated and she's truly the one here in need. But what happens? Jesus responds, doesn't get upset. And he says her name, doesn't he? Martha, Martha. And, and this is one of those, those moments, even as we read it, we look at it and go, that's a, that's a beautiful moment and we can understand it. But, but if you've ever taken time to look at um, what, what other commentaries say or other books and other resources or blogs out there, this is the beautiful thing as I'm looking at it. Across the board, almost every single source out there identifies the same thing about this moment with Jesus saying Martha's name twice. This is meant to communicate a, a, a tender expression. It, it's a Jewish idiom to repeat someone's name twice. Why? to show that you care, that you know who they are. This happens elsewhere in the Bible. God himself says this and, and calls and says, it says Moses, Moses. And, and when he speaks to Moses and he, and he says, Abraham, 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 again, to show tenderly his care for those, those people. Um, even, even in the New Testament, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then even Jesus on the cross says this, my God, my God, why are you forsaken? Why have you forsaken me? And the idea is, whenever we see that, that, that expression recognizes this is Jesus, the Son of God. Apart from everything else, he was invited into their home. But in this moment, he pauses to get Martha's attention to say, he knows her name. The God of all the universe, the one that's greater and vastly superior, the Son of God was there to say that uh, my name is written on his hands. My, my name is gra graven on his hands and written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. The idea is in that moment when we think about this, to know that God cares about us, knows us each by name. If we hear his voice and respond in faith, repenting of our sins and trusting him with a lifetime of faith in the grace of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful thing to know that Jesus, and this is what we're going to see here, that in this moment, the last thing as we think about service and ministry, Jesus tenderly helps us to know what we truly need. Now, Mary certainly was hearing some of that initially at the, at the beginning, finding contentment. Uh, Martha here uh, got distracted, uh, need, so recognizing that those two things, our daily tasks and our spiritual lives, should not be in conflict. But then finally, the last thing we can think about is that ultimately when it comes to serving and growing, we can trust and know that we know that Jesus has a plan, that he has built each and every one of us and knows us by name. Isn't that a beautiful thing when someone remembers your name? Or, or when you think you hear your name called, it, it does something within us, doesn't it? It, it, it gets our attention to recognize uh, that, that someone, someone knows who we are. In fact, even in, in my life, when I hear the word exactly, my, my first name is Zach, sometimes when someone says exactly right, I'll turn and I'll go, wait, someone's saying my name? Or, or how about somebody that you, you met years ago and you, you, you didn't have a, a lot of time to get to know them, but they say, oh, hey, how you doing? And they know you by name. And you say, how do you, how do you know me? Well, I, I remember meeting you and you made such an impression on me. What a beautiful thing. And right here, Jesus does that with, with Martha. He says, oh, Martha, Martha, thank you for coming in tenderly in the midst of this heated situation. And, and as I think about this practically even in my own life as a, as a dad and a, a husband and and especially as a, as a pastor and, and Christian as well, I, I want that to be true in my life. When people come in and, and are frustrated like, like Martha, to know like Jesus, we can apply that to tenderly um, and bring, the, bring some uh, resolution or, or kind of calm the situation down by truly turning to what Jesus says is truly needed. And, and what does he say here? What does he do for, 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 for Martha? 
Well, when he turns to Martha and he says, again, this illustration of, of food, he, he, the, the idea is she could have been in the kitchen preparing a meal for all the disciples, 12 of them, and 13 with Jesus, and 14, 15 with Mary Martha. But what does he say? Uh, Martha, you're in the kitchen. Again, he never gets after her for serving. But what does he say? He says, you've taken on more and more main dishes, more and more different dishes, maybe one too many. But meanwhile, Mary knows who the true honored guest is. Have you have you lost sight, Martha, of the true honored guest? And as we think about service in our own life, that's what's most needed. Or, or, or similarly, too, um, um, Martha, Mary knows what the true main dish is. And in the kitchen here, have you lost what the main dish is? And if, if that's where you are as you think about this in your own life, that's what's amazing about having a church community and a family that we can grow together, that we can have opportunities to serve God with our gifts, but do so making sure that we're turning to Jesus to recognize what we truly need. And if that's that's where you are, if you're looking at uh, where we are even right now, coming out of, of COVID and, and some things have had to be adjusted to go more digitally, um, just, just keep in mind and remember, we would love to continue to help you as a church. We have great ministries and, and opportunities with our youth and, and young adults and, and, and Kathy with the children's ministry and, and, and getting ready and planning for VBS coming up in the summer. There are plenty of opportunities to still be able to serve uh, in whatever capacity that you feel called and led. In fact, one uh, way to highlight it too, a couple more even, uh, is a prayer ministry. We have a prayer list that goes out and we know and we're so grateful people are praying. Uh, we felt prayed for uh, as a staff the, the last few weeks here. So thank you for that. But we're also identifying anybody who's willing to, to be a part of a, a prayer chain uh, um, uh, uh, to identify some of the urgent, immediate prayer uh, needs that come up. So if, if you are interested in that, please uh, let Lisa know and, uh, and, and email the church or, or give a call in. And then another one within it, as I mentioned, even in addition to our, our, our tech ministry, um, if you are uh, interested in worship ministry, we, we would love to uh, continue to, to, to train and, and grow in that way. We have uh, some great uh, uh, voices that are willing to, to sing, but in addition to that, we have some needs uh, musically as, as well. And if you're interested even growing in that, that's something that has been helpful in my own life as well. But it starts right there with the commitment to ask Jesus to help us identify, especially as we, we finish up this time together, uh, which of those two areas do you feel like you're most in need of? Is it is it serving? Because there's some opportunities that, like, like I mentioned, to do so formally and organized uh, through our, our church, and then also informally, um, uh, just in, in, our, in our daily life, but also opportunities to grow. And as I mentioned, we have a Tuesday night Zoom and a, and a Wednesday night Zoom meeting um, that, that meets just to discuss the Bible, pray together, um, since we're, as we continue to come back together and, and ultimately looking forward to returning to more uh, home gatherings uh, as we're able to um, moving, moving forward um, through COVID. But as we close, let's uh, turn to the Lord in, in prayer together. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we are so grateful for your love and your, your presence, your, your grace that you've given to us through Jesus Christ, your word that we listened to this morning thinking about uh, Mary sitting at your feet. God, would you help us to have that attitude um, and, and continue to, to look for ways to get into your word and, and be encouraged and, and to reach out to others and, and to, to lift them up uh, in, in prayer. And God, you certainly know uh, the many needs that are going on in our church. And we continue just to, to bow our hearts and, and call out to you and recognize that, that we're in need and dependent on you, but trusting you that you are doing a mighty work in and through these things, even with setbacks. And we pray uh, against just the evil one, as we've already saw in, in, in John 17, Jesus, you pray that we trust that's true, that you would hold back the enemy from what we are, are, are wanting to continue to, to do in terms of lifting up of the name, the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we just pray again, protection over uh, each and every person in our community, in our world, as we continue to go through uh, COVID. And ultimately, God, too, if uh, in, in the course of thinking through this idea of service um, this, this, this morning and, and through your word, God, we pray that, that others would be, be willing to continue to serve and, and do so joyfully and not, not, not critically as we saw presented there with Martha, knowing that, Jesus, you are tender and you know each of us by name. Would you help us to continue to serve all for your glory? Would you help us to continue to grow, to enjoy more and more of your ways in our life? all for 
the, the, the glory and praise of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you.